Hi, I'm Darren Stanley. In our paper, we describe an up-to-date model of AOX that is constructed automatically by a systematic search of protein structures. 20% of the children under the age of 5 die of diarrheal diseases. That is more than AIDS and malaria cause every year. So there's a clear need to develop drugs against such intestinal parasites, which especially affect children in developing nations. Wergimella uses intestinal parasites such as Enterobius lytica, which causes mebiasis and kills 100 to 150,000 people a year. The organism of this study, Blastocystis, is a very common intestinal parasite and can be found in up to 60% of people in the developing world. However, it is also present in the West, where 1 in 10 persons can carry Blastocystis in their intestines. Riches in my lab focuses to adaptations of these parasites to life on the low oxygen conditions as can be found in our intestines. As humans are aerobic, the biochemistry and metabolism of such parasites will probably be very different from our own metabolism. Such differences could, for example, be exploited to develop new drugs. One of such adaptations is an enzyme called alternative oxidase, which is not present in humans. This is a picture of the mitochondrial uh, inner membrane where electrons flow via many different enzyme complexes to produce water in the end. During this process, protons are being pumped over the internal membrane and the resulting gradient is used to produce ATP. Alternative oxidase, however, here in purple, is short-circuiting this whole electron transport chain and produces also water and does not produce as, such, as much energy as can be found in our mitochondria. Because humans doesn't, don't have this alternative oxidase, this could be an ideal drug target to uh, attack this parasite. In 1999, when the last model of AOX was published by Anderson and Norland, there were just over 10,000 structures in the protein databank. Now there are over 78,000. This increase means that our ability to model unknown regions using fragments of known structures is ever increasing. The two main challenges in modeling AOX were First, to correctly model a large helical region that is not present in any of the experimentally solved structures known to be similar to AOX. And second, to identify the side chains that bind the diiron cofactor. We developed a software package called Spanner that searches all protein fragments of a given length and automatically assembles them into a complete structure given the sequence of the target protein. Here, we illustrate Spanner's search for fragments by showing some of the fragments that Spanner didn't select. The overall result was very close to the manual 1999 model. However, the iron binding side chains turned out to be different. While most of the side chains predicted to bind iron are the same as in the 1999 model, one important difference is the glutamic acid found in helix 4. In our model, the glutamic acid making contact with the iron is residue 200. In the 1999 model, the one making contact is residue 201, shown here. We subsequently found that in AOX from a related organism, mutation of glutamic acid 200, but not 201, abolished its function. So, depending on which glutamic acid makes contact with the iron, we get a 180 degree change in the orientation of helix 4. Just one residue difference between the 1999 model and our model thus has huge structural and functional consequences.